right, thank you all for being here, especially after the lunch break. I hope you're all uh, fit and uh, ready to take up some content. Uh, before I start, I just would like to know who already knew Ecosia before coming here. Let's see. Awesome. That's great. Um, so for those of you who don't know who we are and what we do, um, Ecosia is a search engine. It basically works like... Oh, that was the wrong button. Um, I'm not a technical person, as you can see. Um, so uh, let's try that. In. So Ecosia is a search engine. It basically works like Google. You type in your search terms. And when you hit the search button, we show you search results, also like Google. Um, when you click on, so next to the search results, we also show display uh, advertisements. And when you click on one of these advertisements, then we make money. So far, everything the same as Google. The big difference, though, between us and Google is that we use that money to actually plant trees. And this is how we've al already planted almost 60 million trees uh, with just our small company. So it's pretty awesome, I think. Um, Thank you. So we're planting trees in areas where they're most needed, like here in Burkina Faso, for example, uh, where we're basically turning the desert into, into forests again. And why is that important? Um, for the local people who live in these villages nearby, this is basically a life-changing event. So for them, it means that suddenly they can generate income again, suddenly they have access to water again, and it basically also in the end means that they can send their kids to school. This is really a fundamental change for the local people uh, in the countries that we're working in. We, of course, also do this because we want to fight climate change. Um, every tree we calculate takes around uh, 50 kilograms of CO2 out of the atmosphere during its lifetime. And if you plant 60 million trees, that's quite a lot of CO2. So I personally think that we can't solve the climate crisis if we don't plant a lot of trees. And uh, by a lot of trees, I actually mean uh, one trillion trees. That is 1,000 billion, for those of you who are not comfortable uh, or who don't know uh, the translation of one trillion. Um, quite a lot. So we currently on our planet have space for around 1.2 trillion trees. And if we plant these 1.2 trillion trees, then we solve climate change, basically. We also solve poverty to a large extent, and we also solve hunger and uh, the problem that there is not enough access to water in, on this planet. And the best thing about this is that we would only need around 1% of the global military budget for the next 20 years to actually do that. For me, that's a complete no-brainer, so I could even stop my presentation here now and you all call your local politicians or, and tell them that they please put more money into tree planting. But I'm also, uh, I would like to tell you a bit more about us, the company uh, behind this tree planting activity. So we're a balloon-based startup. Um, to show you some numbers, we currently make around 20 million euros in revenue every year. Um, we have around 10 million monthly active users. And we are, uh, according to Alexa, we're uh, on Alexa rank 480, which means we're among the 500 biggest websites on the planet in terms of traffic. That also means that we are the biggest Euro European search engine, and it also means that we are the biggest environmental website in the world. Um, unfortunately, I hope there were, I wish there were, were more. Um, we have a team, quite a small team here in Berlin of 35 people. We're hiring, by the way, um, especially developers, if you're interested. Um, and um, yeah, our growth trajectory looks pretty good. We have, uh, since January, we grew by almost 50% in revenue, and it seems like it's going to continue like that. As I said, so far we planted almost 60 million trees, which is, yeah, that's what we're, what we're there for. That's what we're, why we're actually doing this. Um, and I want to give you a bit of a background how this company was created. Um, since we're a very small group here, um, I want to show you some pictures from my private life. Um, I started Ecosia almost 10 years ago now. Um, and before I started it, I actually studied business administration. And uh, during my studies, I realized that I don't want to follow the typical career path, but I rather don't want to do something different. Um, the problem was that I didn't really know what uh, I want to do with my life, basically. So I spent almost one and a half years traveling around the world. So I spent half a year living in Nepal. There you see some of the pictures. Um, and there I realized that Nepal is one of the um, 
financially or econ econom economically uh, poorest countries in the world. And there I realized how fortunate I was to be born in Germany. So I met a lot of people who were smarter than I, who were working harder than I, and nevertheless they would never get to the same quality of life that I had. Uh, they would never get the chance to actually travel the world and, and visit other countries. So that made me aware of this big global injustice that we have uh, on our planet, unfortunately. I also uh, continued traveling then, and I spent almost one year in, in South America, and there I saw with my own eyes the destruction that we're doing uh, on our planet, the environmental destruction. So I was driving for hours and hours uh, next to big, big soil plantations uh, that are basically green deserts on places where there used to be uh, wonderful rainforests. So I saw these two things and I wanted to do something against it. Um, and I was also very interested in tech. Well, also already as a small child, I was kind of putting together computers. Um, unfortunately, not to program, but uh, to play computer games. But uh, still, I knew how to put together computers. Um, and I was, for me, it was quite obvious back then that uh, the tech companies, the big tech companies, especially Google, will to a large ex extent dominate our, our, our lives in the future. So yeah, I wanted to do something that helps people, uh, helps the planet, and also does something with search. So I decided why not uh, start a search engine that plants trees. That is basically the story how that came up. Um, the problem was that I didn't know how to start a search engine, and I also didn't know how to plant trees. But still, uh, I was young and foolish enough to actually just get started. Um, so when I came back to Berlin, I found a few people who were crazy enough to, to work with me on this. Um, we were, work, we were working in, a, in an office, if you can call it that way, actually it was just uh, the storage room of a, of a mosaic workshop. Um, but we were working there um, and had a lot of fun. And actually, almost after maybe just half a year, we had the first version of Ecosia up and running. Um, it wasn't the most beautiful website on the internet, but still it was live. And uh, we got some feedback from people who really uh, liked what we were doing. Um, but still, since we didn't have any external investments, it took us quite some time to actually build this up and then also get it, uh, yeah, get it to get to get it to get more traction. So I started Ecosia in 2009, and it took us almost f four years to actually get to one million trees. So that was one of the points where we, of course, we had a big celebration, uh, we had a big party, and we were all happy about our one uh, million trees planted. But we also realized that one million trees basically on, on the global scale is n just not enough. We just need to do a lot more. And that was actually the point when we made the first change to the Ecosia business model. We used to give 80% of all our revenues to tree planting, which in hindsight was just crazy, um, because that basically meant that we never could uh, pay decent salaries, neither to me nor to the people who, who were working at the company. Um, it also meant that at the end of the month, there was never money left over to do any investments. Uh, in some months, even just the cost for service and so on uh, were more than we than the 20% that we actually set aside for our own costs. So that was the point uh, when we when the company was four years old and reached one million trees, where we actually communicated to our users that we want to change that model and that we're going to give all of our profits to tree planting in the future. We thought that our users would be outraged, but they were actually uh, really positive about that and said, yeah, that's awesome. Of course, you need to make investments. And within just a few months, we actually reached a point where we were planting more trees uh, under the new model. Even though we gave a lower percentage, the cake in a way got bigger so that we could give money, more money to tree planting. And that was actually the point when Ecosia uh, started turning into a real company, I would say, where we could really afford a decent office, for example, and also paying decent salaries to people. So now we're as I said, a team of 35 people. We have um, a wonderful office in, in the core of Berlin um, with a ping pong table, free breakfast on Wednesdays and everything that you need uh, to be a hip Berlin startup. Um, so yeah, that's really awesome. So, but it took us a while to get there because we didn't have uh, investment money to build all that up, but we always had to generate the funds for these kind of investments from our own cash flow. But Ecosia is also... Um, this, which is um, the tree planting projects. So when I say that we have 35 people working at the company, I'm not counting the thousands of people who are actually planting the trees for us. 
And this is actually probably the much, much more difficult work. So for me, um, it's really interesting. I try to go at least once a year to one of these tree planting projects to observe all the positive impact that we're having there. And for me, it's really mind-blowing um, every time that I have a chance to go there. Um, it's also just fun to be a CEO of a search engine that plants trees, which are two completely different worlds. Um, I picked this picture here because um, there I was sitting um, on a pickup uh, while visiting our project in Indonesia. And maybe two or three minutes after that picture was taken, actually the whole pickup just was driving through a river and actually fell over and we all landed in the river. <laughs> so that's not the typical kind of uh, event that you usually have when you work at an internet startup. So it's really good to see that I mean, it's, it's amazing experiences, but it's also, it shows you that many, many people on, these, on this planet actually have very, very different problems to the problems that we, that we all here have. So, and it also makes me very humble and grateful for the opportunities that I have and gives me the motivation that I need to yeah, keep working hard and even harder if possible. So, yeah, we're trying to plant a lot of trees. That's our core mission, but we're also trying to do other things. Um, you probably heard about uh, this forest, which is the forest of Hambach. Who of you is from Germany here? Do, who, who knows this forest? Yes, so I'll give it a little bit of a background. This is um, an ancient old growth forest that is standing right next to uh, Europe's biggest open cast coal mine, uh, which is run by an energy company called RWE. And um, they want to extend their production, so they want to cut down that forest. And there was a lot of uh, demonstrations so that this shouldn't happen. Um, and we also, as a company, we discussed uh, while having beers what we could do to maybe uh, help protect that forest. So, and at some point, somebody basically jokingly said, hey, we could just buy the forest. And we thought, <laughs> what a stupid idea, let's do it. Um, <laughs> So we extended an offer to um, buy the forest of Hambach for uh, 1 million euro. Um, unfortunately, RWE didn't accept our offer, but still it generated a lot of attention to the topic again. So a lot of uh, German and also international press asked um, if RWE should still be allowed to own that forest or even cut it down. So I think we did our small share to, to hopefully make sure that this forest actually will stay standing. And that for me is important that we as a company also take our responsibility not only to further develop our own business, but to have change in, in society as a whole. Um, another thing that we did last year actually was um, that we turned Ecosia into uh, one of the first purpose companies. Uh, what is that? A purpose company basically is a normal limited liability company or a GmbH. And you give one share of your com uh, one percent of your company to a purpose foundation. That's how they're called, and they, in return, get veto rights so that you can never sell your company, you can never take any profits out of your company, you can never change the purpose of your company, and people who own shares always have to be people who actually work at the company. So the control is with people actually within the company. A lot of investors, not sure how many investors are around here, probably wouldn't like that idea very much. Uh, but for us, it just felt the right thing to do. Because for me, um, this is basically the answer to turbo capitalism. I think we have shifted a bit too far to a system that is just, for the sake of profits, destroying our planet. And I think companies like this, like these, um, could be partially the answer to uh, the crisis that I think we have at the moment. And it's really, so basically, I want to put that effect in, sorry. Um, wow, yeah. Um, so basically, Ecosia is not for sale. And I think that's, that's very important because we're, more, we're becoming more than a, than a normal company. We're becoming a movement, I hope. We are already one of the biggest environmental movements of the planet. And that also comes with a responsibility. And just me and my, uh, my business partner, Tim, we just decided that we should not have the right to sell this to anybody. Even though, that, even though that means to say no to a lot of money, uh, it still felt for us that it, this would be the right thing to do. Um, yes, and then also that mean, meant that a lot of people uh, talked about this step, um, which gave us a lot of publicity, which is great. But um, also now I have basically every week somebody who is a founder of a company or people who are planning to found companies who want to take that same direction, who basically wants uh, to give away their company um, and make it 
turn it into a non-profit company. So I think that's, that's really great. I think everything for Ecosia is really just going awesomely well. Uh, everything's perfect. But uh, I'm not 100% satisfied uh, because of this. Uh, who knows what that is? Any ideas? I see a hand over there. Just shout it. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, this is uh, global temperatures uh, during the last more or less 100 uh, years. So this is a different kind of chart. As you see, we're already uh, in the middle of climate change. Climate change has already begun. And I think f a lot of people don't know what that actually means. Um, for me, climate change is the most underestimated existential threat, even though now a lot of people are talking about it. I still think that most... Uh, most people haven't understood what this actually means. We're currently like, really on a path to extinction. Um, and if we don't change something within the next five years, then it will, be, uh, then it will basically be, be too late. So, um, and I don't see that change happening yet. I see a lot of action now on the streets, which, which really, really makes me happy. But I hope that uh, this topic becomes even more important so that we just uh, find a way to avoid uh, catastrophic uh, climate collapse uh, because that would really be the biggest failure of our generation, I think. Um, so we're trying to be, we as Ecosia, we try to be one of the biggest forces to actually uh, help find cli fight climate change. Uh, so I try to, I like that picture by Delacroix a lot, um, but I try to improve it a little bit with my Photoshop skills. So. There you go. Um, <laughs> so that's what we're trying to be. We try to sh lead by example. Uh, we are 100% reuse 100% renewable energy since renewed, since the company existed, basically. Um, also, we always put our purpose before our, before profit. We treat our people well. We uh, yeah don't buy stuff that we don't need. We fly almost never. So. Yeah, we're trying to be a role model and also try to encourage others to, um, yeah, to make sure that we win this, this fight against climate change. And I'm really happy about the movement that is currently happening on the streets, and I think we should all support that. I'm, I think there's also something like developers for the future, right? Maybe you want to join this? Uh, I think Ecosia is actually going to join it. So yeah, that's uh, who we are and what we're, uh, what we're trying to do. Um, I think I have around 10 minutes left, so I want, I want to do a little experiment with you. Um, because the reason why I'm here is, um, of course, that you all know Ecosia, but what, what is actually more important to me that you maybe try to help us solve this climate crisis. So I want to do a little experiment. Um, I will give you one minute now so that you can maybe think about what you could do in your personal lives to help solve the climate crisis. And I advise you not to skip that step because then in the second step you would not look very uh, <laughs> you would not look very good. So I will I will just uh, time one minute now and uh, yeah take some time to think about what you can do. Okay, so that one minute is up, and now it's time for step number two, which is, uh, I think you're all here for networking as well. So step number two is that, you, that I'll time another minute so that you take 30 seconds each to tell the person sitting next to you what you actually just decided that you want to do. Um, so I hope you actually thought about it in the first place.
Awesome. I hope you had a, a great conversation, and I hope you can even continue that after after this session is over. Uh, it's really it feels very difficult for me to interrupt uh, a discussion about sustainability. So I hope you you keep you keep continuing uh, that afterwards. Um, so now we have around five more minutes, and I just I was wondering if some of you maybe has questions about Ecosia, about what we're trying to do, about anything else. Um, so we have a few microphones in the yeah. audience, and it's Rihanna and Bao helping us with microphones. So please, uh, in case uh, maybe you point on on the people, and then you get the right microphone, so that so that, so that can everybody can hear you. Thank you. Um, I was wondering. Um, is there a process that you take to um, make sure that the trees that you're planting are staying there? How do you maintain them? Like, do you, um, you plant them, but how do you make sure that they stay there, that they're growing, that they're getting water? Yeah, so, I mean, when we say we've planted 60 million trees, then these are trees that actually survive. So um, we planted a lot more. Um, we basically, if you want to make sure that trees uh, survive, you have to make sure that they provide value to the people living in that area. Um, and that is our main uh, criterion when it comes to evaluating projects that apply. Um, you basically need to make sure that the people understand that they can get uh, yeah, economic benefits usually out of, out of the forest that we're planting. Um, then it could still go wrong, but um, the likelihood of, of failure is much lower. And the techniques really depend on the region. In some areas, you, we usually don't water trees uh, because that would be very, very expensive. Um, but in some areas, we just dig little, little holes into the ground and, and throw seeds into these holes. And then when it rains, the water comes. In other areas, you don't need to worry about water at all because it rains every day. Um, so. Yeah, it really depends. But we have somebody at, at Ecosia who, in my opinion, has the greatest job in the world. He's our tree planting officer. And uh, I applied for that position, but I wasn't, I wasn't qualified, unfortunately. Um, so he, um, he's looking after our project and, and setting all these criteria. I mean, there are other criteria as well that we don't use, um, that we don't plant any monocultures or do, don't use chemicals in our projects. Uh, fair treatment of when men, men and women. Um, no child labor and so on. So all these things uh, are also a criteria, but survival is of course the biggest challenge and there you need to make sure you meet the needs of the people. I can't really see, maybe you, so I'm, I'm making it very difficult for the microphone now. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, compared to Google, your, your company seems rather tiny. So um, what do you think, uh, about the quality of your search results because I think that is vital to any search engine uh, for whatever purpose you maintain it. So would you say that the, the search results are, are equivalent or, or close to the quality of the results of the, the bigger search engines? Or yes, so we un make this? Yeah. yeah, so this is also, this is a big challenge number two, so you pointed these out very well. Um, so we're working together with Microsoft uh, to access their search algorithm. If we were not able to do that, then I think the whole company wouldn't be possible because you need billions of dollars of investment to actually make a decent search engine. Um, and on top of that, we're building other things. So we, we basically depend on Microsoft's index, which fortunately has improved a lot over the last years um, and is getting very, very competitive, I would say. Um, I'm also sometimes using Google. Don't tell anyone. Um, so. <laughs> But the number of Google searches that I'm doing has really reduced over the last years. So, um, but we, we, of course, we have to try to keep up um, not only with the search quality, but also we have to build a lot of apps, uh, a lot of additional software. We have 10 million monthly users now, so stability of the site is a big, big problem. And we have a team of, I think, 15 developers, maybe 20 developers now. So that's really a lot to handle for very, very few people. So we need great, great people. So that's, I think, our key. Christian, thank you so much for a very inspiring presentation. Lucky someone, someone showed the goals here that I mentioned yesterday. What I was wondering, do you guys do use research? Um, research, in, how do you mean, for, for what? Do you talk to your users? Do you see why uh, they want to be sustainable? Why they want to search with your search engine? Do you? Yeah, so we have uh, also UX people at the company, I think three UX uh, positions. And yeah, they help us, us figure out what, what people want. All right.
right, then I think Maybe time is over one as well. Question. There's one more. Let's do one, one. One in the back, maybe. Um, how do you make sure that the, the ground you're uh, planting the trees is the ground that is uh, owned by people that um, support your company and that it's ground that it's not uh, hurt by any industry when uh, the trees are planted. Yeah, so the, the land that we plant our trees on is usually owned by the communities and we make a long-term agreement with these communities. So usually 30, 40, 50 years, um, we agree together with them that uh, the trees can't be cut down and also the land can't be bought by anybody else. Of course, we're working in countries where um, agreements are difficult to... I mean, not to make, but then really to, to follow up on them if they are broken, um, that's sometimes challenging. But so far, we didn't have any big problems there because um, maybe you don't have a good law system uh, in many of these countries, but usually uh, trust and honor is something that is very important to a lot of communities in, in developing countries. So if you have a good conversation with the people really on an eye to eye, um, on an eye level, then, then I think um, so far that hasn't been a problem for us. And we would, we would never take away land from people who, um, I don't know, so that they can't do farming on it anymore. We just take land that is not used or not uh, useful for the villages. Okay, so it's safe country. <laughs> uh, safe country for the, for the uh, planted trees, so to speak. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And, and you're still uh, organizing further communities to uh, make the movement grow? Yes, so we need, uh, if you want to change your job, um, we need more tree planting projects. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, there are not enough tree planting initiatives uh, on this planet, which is especially worrying since we need to plant these one, point, uh, these one trillion trees. So, yeah, there are a lot of people who want to do it, but really good organizations who can do it at scale, at very low cost, with a high survival rate, there are not so many, actually, which is a problem. Okay, thank you. Cool. So, thank you very much. I think uh, afterwards there's also a possibility to talk to Christian, hopefully. Um, so, we are all going now to be Ecosia users, yeah, uh, if we're not already uh, using it uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you very much for this wonderful closing keynote. Big applause again, please.